Ahoy, and welcome to Touchdown Travel's first cruise edition. After a full day's journey to Barbados, we took it easy at the all-inclusive Turtle Beach Hotel. The accommodations were clean and basic, but the property sat on one of the most beautiful beaches in Barbados. We just got to Barbados, they gave us a welcome drink. After two years of delays, the luxury superyacht Aruma finally set sail for its inaugural season. After three cancelled voyages, we were finally able to board on the five-night voyage in the Caribbean. At the time of booking, there were only two cabins available. We booked the Terra Suite 604 on the port side. If you're booking, we would recommend booking on the starboard side, as they had better views while in port. We were greeted in our cabin with champagne and as Marriott Bonvoy members, a complimentary box of chocolates and a first night's pressing. We had specific plans when it came to excursions in port. They were not offered by the Ritz. We did attempt to contact the Shores Excursion Department for help, but they didn't respond. We had to make our own plans. Petit Patan is not for the faint of heart. It is a technical climb and requires a lot of scrambling and climbing on ropes. We found a guide from Amazona Adventures on all trails. We were able to send a DM and make arrangements on Instagram. This climb is hard, and you guys, my legs were spaghetti at the end of it. Evruma has three evening dining venues included in the experience. For an additional fee, you can enjoy a course meal at sea. After our first night on the yacht, we learned that reservations were highly recommended for dinner. We saw some guests turned away for not having a reservation. Our evenings mainly consisted of dinner, followed by listening to the jazz band from the bar in the living room, and then after hours on the observation deck. While looking for a dive shop in Bikwa, we came across another guest who spilled the tea on Bikia's local favorite, Max Pizza. We couldn't resist a slice. The dive at Devil's Table was filled with beautiful coral and exotic marine life. Unfortunately, our devices weren't working well, so we couldn't feature the dive in all of its glory. Mistral is the yacht's Mediterranean dining venue. The food and view is inescapable. It was very windy when we ate there and literally had to anchor down our dinner setting. On an early excursion day, we used in-house dining for breakfast. You fill out the menu and leave it in your mailbox the night prior to the order. <laughs> Uh, 
Booking excursions online was an easy process. We booked the four hour eco trek while in St. George's. After a hike in the mountains, spa time is a must. The ladies' room was equipped with a sauna and steam room, and the deck did have a hot tub. We overheard the other guests having trouble finding booking for services. The hairdresser mentioned that some guests were able to make bookings for services four months ahead of time. By the fourth day, our routine was set. Wake up, head to the gym on the ninth deck, burn off some pesky calories, breakfast at the pool house or Avruma room, then off to port. A feature of the Avruma is the Marina Terrace. The terrace is on the stern of the ship and offers a lounge and access to the sea. Unfortunately, due to weather conditions, the marina was closed during our voyage. On the final day, the shore excursion team was able to set up an all-inclusive Shenanigans Beach Club event at the Sandy Lane Yacht Club. Kanwan Island is stunning. We really wanted to find a dive shop, but we weren't allowed to leave the premise and explore the rest of the island. You didn't exactly have to twist our arms to eat and drink at the pool instead. The Ritz-Carlton truly is an opulent experience. Bon voyage, until next time.